and welcome to Diabetes Connections in the News. I'm Stacey Sims, and every other Friday, I bring you a short episode with the top diabetes stories and headlines happening now. Our top story this week, Insulet announces the full market release of the Omnipod 5 app for iPhone in the U.S. The company says this has been the number one feature requested by Omnipod 5 users. The app allows you to fully control your Omnipod 5 system from the compatible iPhone. You can bolus for a meal, change a pod, adjust settings, so you do not need to carry a separate controller. The Omnipod 5 app for iPhone is compatible with the Dexcom G6 right now. It is expected to be compatible with the Dexcom G7 sometime in 2025. The Omnipod 5 app for Android phones is also available in the U.S. The FDA says it's okay to keep on your Freestyle Libre 2 and 3 for procedures like x-rays, CT scans, and MRIs. Abbott says that makes its systems the first and only patient-applied CGM sensors approved for these screenings. The company says it rigorously tested the Libre 2 and 3 to ensure they remain effective after radiologic procedures. This FDA clearance comes with no changes made to the sensors. Tidepool announces a new data integration with Abbott for the company's Freestyle Libre CGMs. This will deliver cloud-to-cloud integration for an automatic stream of data from patients using the Abbott CGMs in the U.S. Tidepool Plus is a diabetes data platform. It provides tracking and visualization of diabetes data to make the data informative and actionable for clinicians, people with diabetes, and caregivers. Continuing with the Freestyle Libre news, Beta Bionics now says it has launched the integration of the Islet Bionic Pancreas with the Freestyle Libre 3 Plus. The company's announced this plan a couple of weeks ago, but now it is out in the marketplace. Islet users can now update the software to choose between the Libre 3 Plus and Dexcom CGMs. You may recall that the Freestyle Libre 2 Plus is compatible with the Tandem T-Slim X2, and it is also uh, compatible with the Omnipod 5 in Europe. Abbott has also struck a deal with Medtronic, but they will develop a different CGM specifically for that company's insulin delivery systems. Dexcom news now, and Dexcom is asking the FDA to approve the G7 for 15 days. Right now, the G7 has a 10-day wear time. Dexcom also launched the G7 in Australia and rolled out Dexcom 1 in France. And some front office news, CCO Terry Lover plans to retire from Dexcom at the end of the year. Dexcom also gets a place on Time's Best Inventions of 2024 with Stello, the first glucose biosensor available in the U.S. without a prescription. Dexcom says it is honored to be, quote, recognized among other unique innovations in the home health category that support people's health. Luna Diabetes is moving forward with a pivotal trial evaluating its automated closed-loop insulin technology called the Luna System. This is really interesting. I've been following this for a couple of years. It's designed to address nighttime glucose control for insulin pen users. It's meant for use only during sleep. You get an automated insulin pump that you wear only overnight. It works with a CGM, and then you go back to MDI during the day. Luna Diabetes expects the study to be completed early next year with plans to commercially launch the device soon after. Researchers are urging caution when prescribing off-label glucose-lowering drugs to individuals with type 1 while acknowledging that doctors keep prescribing them because they seem to work so well. We are talking about GLP-1s and SGLT-2 drugs, which show a real benefit for heart and kidney health. Now, SGLT-2 inhibitors carry a significant risk of DKA, but with normal blood sugars. Due to this risk, they were removed for type 1 use in Europe, and the FDA has not approved them here. But the data suggests clinicians are still prescribing these treatments to manage heart and kidney complications in type 1 patients. So these authors say more study is needed, but before such evidence becomes available, caution should be exercised when prescribing these treatments to individuals with type 1. More good islet transplant news from the University of Chicago These are potentially the first human cases of insulin independence achieved using a transplant of insulin-producing islet cells in combination with an experimental immunosuppressant drug. Now, two people in the study are off external insulin. They have normal A1Cs. The third subject decreased insulin use by more than 60% following the procedure and continues on an insulin independence trajectory. 
Some of the funding for this study comes from Breakthrough T1D. Semiglutide may reduce Alzheimer's risk in type 2 patients with research suggesting significant protective benefits compared to other diabetes drugs. This is published in the Journal of the Alzheimer's Association, and the effect was observed consistently across various subgroups, including differences in obesity status, gender, and age. Semiglutide is the active component in WIGOV and Ozempic. About 120,000 Americans die from Alzheimer's disease every year. It's the seventh leading cause of death nationwide. Right back to the news in just a minute. But first, Diabetes Connections is brought to you by Edge Park. Edge Park's variety of automated insulin delivery systems from top brands such as Medtronic and Tandem make managing your blood sugar easier. Plus, Edge Park accepts most insurance plans and handles the paperwork so you can focus on other important things. Go to diabetes-connections.com and click on the Edge Park logo to learn more about Edge Park's insulin pumps, supplies, and CGM devices. Back to the news and Apple's non-invasive blood glucose monitoring rumors are back, but this sounds just uh, like software, no watch or hardware. According to the report, Apple doesn't currently have plans to release a standalone app, but may integrate the technology into its future health products. The app could reportedly show consumers how certain foods impact their blood sugar levels based on measurements taken by existing blood sugar monitoring devices. One report says Apple is exploring uses for blood sugar data and what tools they can create for consumers as a result. Apparently, this report says testing on the app has been paused, but the tests could pave the way for better food tracking on Apple's own health software or better third-party glucose tracking integration. And finally, it is Diabetes Awareness Month. I don't do a lot here, as uh, longtime listeners will probably know. I will be reporting on what some of the companies and individuals may be doing for November for Diabetes Awareness Month in the U.S. But you know my opinion. I mostly think this month is great to educate the general public. But every month is Diabetes Month for this community. You can follow along on social to see uh, what I'm doing there. I'll be doing some videos and we'll certainly have more on the podcast. But I do think it is an opportunity to educate maybe our friends and family who don't live with diabetes day in and day out. And that is it for In the News. I'm Stacey Sims. I'll see you back here soon. Until then, be kind to yourself. Diabetes Connections is a production of Stacey Sims Media. All rights reserved, all wrongs avenged.